Hello everyone, uh, Matt McChesney here again with Dark Matter Dragon Games. Um, just wanted to give you a, a little uh, overview of a game that I really enjoyed from Gen Con. A lot of you may have seen some artwork at Gen Con on some of the, uh, the freebie bags and the uh, the swag bags they gave away. And you're going, what is, what is this medieval art on this bag? What's, what's going on with this? Well, this was for a game called Ordus Regni. You may have seen it in some glass cases as well. They had their own room. It was a little back off the uh, the beaten path to find it. They had a lot of little circles on the ground looked pointing you in the right direction. Some of you may have made it back there. Some of you may have not. Um, I made it back there on actually the day before. I was a Kickstarter backer on, on this game. Uh, unfortunately, the, the Kickstarter didn't go through. It's a little weird. Um, the Kickstarter was actually for the app, not the game. The game was, a, was actually something you got for backing the app. So it was listed as software, not as a actual game. So it kind of went, went under a lot of people's radar because of that, I think. Um, and then they showed up at, uh, at Gen Con, and I think they got a, a little bit more buzz out of it from that. But uh, I don't think they've really gotten the, the attention they deserve for this game. So I wanted to do a little video real quick, just kind of giving a quick overview of the game itself. So... Um, I don't have my normal space. I'm kind of in a, a little a smaller room. Um, we're currently painting the room that I uh, currently do a lot of my videos in, so I don't have my, my setup in my rig like I normally would. I've taken some pictures beforehand, so hopefully that can give you, that's going to give you a little bit more of an idea of how the game plays. Um, I'm going to try to do a little uh, talking here about how the game plays, show you a bit of the cards and the artwork and the components here. So the first thing I want to show you are these nice wood trays with these cards. I haven't sleeved these cards yet. I'm going to because they are gorgeous. These cards are just beautiful. And if you notice, they don't have any words on them. That was one of the design choices by the people that made the game. I'm going to move the camera over just slightly because the, the ceiling light there is glaring a bit. There we go. So I'm going to try to get rid of some of that glare there. So I can show you some of these games, some of these cards here. Another thing I want to show you too is the the instruction manual. It's printed on this really thick paper, and it's got this gorgeous like medieval artwork in it. I'm a sucker for all this uh, this medieval like tapestry artwork, um, stuff you would just see hanging in a castle somewhere. Um, all the banners and sigildry that you would get. That kind of that kind of style of artwork is just all through this game. Um, that is kind of one of the uh, one of the draws to it. Every every set of cards has their own kind of backside with with banners. I got all uh, all three sets, which means I can do a full six player game of this, which uh, actually turns out to be pretty crazy if you try to uh, do a whole six player game. Works fairly quickly in a one-on-one, uh, -on -one, uh, two-player game. I think that's kind of how it best is suited is for a one-on-one a -on -one style game. Um, it feels very much like a tournament style game where it would be set up kind of like in a, in, a, in a place to do tournaments and you would do one-on-one -on -one tournaments with this game. That's, that's the feeling that I get. You can play four players, you can play six players, and it's, it's fun. But I think the real beauty of the game kind of comes down to two-player games, back and forth, um, between two players, seems to work a little bit better. So, the card every, that you get to start with is the palace card. Let me show you that a little bit, trying to figure out where my camera angles are. But there you go. These, these cards are just gorgeous. Um, luckily, they also will give you these wonderful player aids that are on fabric. Now don't confuse this with a napkin and wipe your mouth with it because that would be bad. And you would be able to read it. and You probably have cheaper napkins. But another thing they included, at least for everyone that was a Kickstarter backer, and I think they, these are going to come with the standard game as well, and that are these training decks. So for people that are new to the game, that haven't quite figured out what all things do yet. You just want to hurry up and get them into the game and get them started. They're training decks, and you can see those do have the words on them 
for what the cards do. Every card is double-sided, so every card can be used as a tower or as for what it for what it is. But these training decks are pre-built, so you don't have to worry about going through these 90 cards and figuring out which which of the ones they're going to use. Everybody gets 25 cards, including the castle, the palace card. So these have their own palace card. In a regular game, you would get to build your deck. You would get to determine how many of each card you want and what kind of ratios you want in there of lords to lands to treachery cards and intrigue cards and um, political cards and th that kind of thing. But these decks come pre-built so the new players don't have to worry about that. You can just get them in and, and kind of get them started. How you play is similar to, to most deck building games where you would shuffle your entire hand together. Everything but the palace card. Palace card goes out in front of you. And you would draw five cards off the top of the deck. That would be your starting hand. So you would then play these cards in front of you in your earldom. Everybody is an earl of, of England here, and we're fighting over England to see who, who can get the most power and become king of England and take over England. So that is the idea. So through military, political, and even sometimes jousting. Jousting can be a way of uh, turning the tables on your opponents in interesting ways. Um, not everybody comes back from a joust. Sometimes jousts get kind of ugly and nasty, and there are prizes to be won at jousts that can turn the tables. So here are all the components just kind of laid out on a table here. Uh, I took this picture a little while ago, but this is all the, the complete six-player set. In the normal player set, you would just get the blue and the red. But in the complete six-player set, you get the green and the yellow and the purple and the orange as well. So you get 90 sets of... You get, each set has 90 cards in it. Each person gets the same set of cards, and you get to pick from those cards any ratio of the cards that are available to put in your hand. Most cards have six of each kind, and you can put that many into your deck and mix them up and, uh, and play in different ways. Different strategies, you can kind of read your opponent, figure out how your opponent likes to play. After a couple of plays with somebody, you can kind of get an idea of what they like to do, and then you can build the deck to counter that. So you can kind of counter them a little bit and uh, figure out different strategies for taking them down. Sometimes not, it's not all about building the biggest army and going after somebody. Sometimes you also would want to uh, take, an take an army out by um, taking out their lands. If, if an Earl doesn't have lands to field an army with, then they can't fight. Um, so basically, if you don't have enough lands to put the army on, then the army that you have does you no good. Um, then there are also the, the battle cards that come out. And sometimes if somebody fields their entire army and is coming at you with everything they have, that doesn't always mean they're going to win. Sometimes, even if, they, if the numbers are in their favor, there's a little bit of randomness that can be in there that could play to the underdog's favor. And if they can play those cards right, then they can come out to be the victor as well. Um, battles don't always go like you'd expect them to. Things go wrong. Um, somebody outflanks somebody else and pulls off a crazy maneuver, and that, uh, that causes things to not go the way you'd expect. But... You just have to plan for that and not throw everything that you have at somebody at once. All right, here's what a normal hand would kind of look like. We have, uh, I was playing the green card here, and this was actually a four-player game. We had four players at the game. And uh, no, the Cheetos are not part of the set. No, those, those are ex expansion. That's the snack expansion. That has to come later. But uh, you basically have these cards out on the table just like this, where you would have the palace as your, as your anchor to your first fief. So that first first one right there is a fief, and then I have a second fief with that uh, castle uh, above the above the palace there. And then I have a tower out as well. So if anybody were to attack me, that tower would absorb some of that damage. And if either of those castles or palaces get destroyed, every piece of property that is attached to them will also be destroyed. So that makes those, the more stuff you put on each 
uh, castle and palace. The more stuff on there, the juicier a target that is for somebody to take out. Also, you can install face cards in your palaces and your castles, just like I have that prince card right there um, stuck in the top of the palace card. That means that's that's where he lives. The prince is as prince in his palace. That makes him a prince lord. Anybody that's out on the table and like that, any face card um, put into a castle or palace is then considered a lord. Um, and then that gives them extra powers and abilities. It also gets them out of your hand, and you can activate those cards um, for defense or for attacking. Or attacking on your turn or defense if somebody attacks you. So those cards are very useful out on the table because they're not just out there to look pretty. They can actually do things for you while they're out on the table, which is very nice. Uh, market Town there, that doubles your lands, so everything your lands there can do um, gets doubled. Normally a land will let you recruit uh, one army card or field one army card, but with the marketplace each one of those lands lets you recruit recruit two army cards, not each one of them, but you either recruit two because you have a marketplace, but you can field four. So each one of those lands can field two army cards. And you get army cards, that little deck that's out there a little further, the black and white deck, kind of straight across from the green one there. I wish I could point at things, but like I said, I don't have my table set up like I normally would. But this kind of gives you an idea of what the game looks like in play. I'd like to just say uh, this is a very interesting game. I've had a lot of fun playing it. Um, really like uh, how, it, how it feels and how it, how it plays with, with each other. really feels like a medieval game, like you're part of several medieval battles. There is player elimination, which is why I think it works better uh, two-player versus four or six. Um, I would like to see if I could get another set of the base set so that I could actually play... Uh, uh, more of a tournament style rather than uh, a whole six player game just these two players play these two players play and these two players play and then we kind of do like a mini tournament that way I think this game really shines uh, in that in that kind of play style where you're doing it more of a, a tournament style rather than a big group play um, basically because in a big group uh, somebody could get ganged up on and that's it's not a lot of fun for somebody to get ganged up on and just get taken out of the game just because people want people want to get rid of the player. Um, that can get kind of kind of messy there. Um, but I just wanted to give a little overview of the game, kind of let people know about it, and there we go. Hope you enjoyed it.